concept first like what what the part of closeness here like of being closed off so it'd be an additional challenge that we're not directly in front of each other but you and your partner would sense given our limitations what can i give they would want in this moment and so that could be verbal nonverbal. the the hard thing here is we can only do any of this over the screen i mean in this juxtaposition between simultaneous openness and closeness what represents closeness because openness is readiness to accept the gift and uh, from the person who receives and for the person who gives readiness to give uh, whatever is wanted to be accepted. So in both right. cases, it's sort of given, given nature, which I perceive in my vocabulary as open, not closed. So what, what are the parts that are closed that we are talking about here? The closed part for the giver would be <clears throat> hesitation to trust their instinct of what the other person wants to receive and hesitation to give what they want to receive and for the receiver to be honest with themselves, the other person, with everyone about what they want and transmitting that and about receiving potentially. So like you could do this exercise 100% open, but I think it, that can be difficult when there's not complete trust between two people. I mean, so can we identify what we feel is, are the things that are open and closed about sex so, so that we can better design the game that explores those two things? Yeah, that sounds good. Um, sex is open in that it is a channel between two or more people, or even if it's solo, you are open within yourself. Um, so the I'm thinking about like just with my body alone when no one else is there, it's like both parts or multiple parts, if I'm considering two parts of my body or my body as a whole, have to be exchanging some sort of sensation or information about the sensation in some way. And that would be a sort of openness that then when you include a dyad also continues where uh, if you, if someone stroke someone's hand or something like that with their finger that's information that is passing through and if something is going on in their shoulder that also continues an easy example for ways in which it is closed is that everyone typically has things in sex that they like and don't like and the don't likes are usually pretty strong. Um, so if I suddenly involve a, a pet lizard in a sexual act with someone else, then that would usually be a no for most people, I think. Um, once a cat scratched me during sex, and that was a, I guess I was open to it in the end, but it was very surprising. And so at that moment it was closed, but then I was forced to be open to it because it happened. I also think what Danica was talking about, about hesitation or um, any sort of block having to do with fear, either of giving or receiving, is something that's closed in sex. And I think something that can contribute to that is like ideals about what it is to be sexy or what it is to be whatever symbol that you want to embody if you're striving to embody a symbol. Um, masculine, feminine, dominant, submissive, whatever it may be. And so like kind of setting up a fence for yourself within that, I guess like anything that's involving some sort of filter is a sort of closedness.
so I guess then the next question I have is is what is desire about desirable about the closeness and what is desirable about the openness and then what is undesirable about both of those things and is there a way to reconcile that? Well, it came to mind as I was saying that, as I was like, well, like yesterday, um, we were talking about how constraints breed creativity. And so I think there's a way to be playing into an ideal without filters, which is kind of closed in that you're like, technically limiting your options, but it's open in that you're not like, self conscious or feeling like you have to be a certain way, and then like acting accordingly. Certainly that reminds me of, of sort of doing it in stages where you have an open stage and a closed stage where the open stage is designed to just produce all of this stuff, which in the closed stage you can tear apart for, uh, you know, the thing you actually want to pour time and energy into. That actually reminds me about the diagram that you shared with us, was it yesterday, Danica, mm -hmm. um, about group formation and like when a group is going to be most active and inactive and so on. You How have does this, it remind you? So you have this period where some sort of generation is happening we could call this the open stage. And then another period where there is more structure imposed from whatever is generated in a way. Um, and then there's like this narrow, narrowing period. I'm kind of imagining like, uh, like almost like a waveform that goes like, um, I like <laughs> open and then closed and then open and then closed and open and then closed where you are kind of going like a like a broad search and then you narrow down from something you found in the broad search and then you blow up again um, from something you kind of create in the narrow portion and so on and so forth. So maybe the game is is that you have a moment to play act all of these different types of sex that you might wish to have and then you have a period of retrospection afterward where you said i like this i didn't like this and you get to choose one to explore in more depth yeah, yeah like ray probably isn't exploring more cat scratches for instance <laughs> right so you could uh so you have this phase um where you brainstorm sex acts um and it could be anything from uh sex between a clown and with a batman mask on um to back scratches and the only thing you're allowed to do in this phase is come up with new kinds of sex acts uh, so you write those down or something, or you act those out. Maybe it's a charade situation. Um, and then in the next phase, you select one and do something with it. What would you do with the clown with the Batman mask? I guess you could come up with some sort of clown with a Batman mask dance. <laughs> I mean, shouldn't that be the adversarial scenario of Batman versus the Joker? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about it. But yes, I guess that would be what we get out of that. <laughs> uh Or vice versa, the Joker versus Batgirl. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or Harley Quinn and Batgirl, or, you know, any of the above. Joker and Batman. And so I guess the question would be, if we have that happen in that phase, 
how does it pop back up to a generative phase or an open phase? Is this really See? open close or is this more like explore exploit? I mean, how different are they? Yeah, how would you describe the difference? Well, maybe I'm like, I guess there doesn't need to be a difference, but I thought when we were first talking about open close, it was kind of like more about human connection. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if we're just think if we're brainstorming different superhero sex acts and then narrowing down to select a few that we think are really cool, that's not really like we're being pretty open with each other during the whole process, which is more like explore exploit. So then maybe it's, yeah. well, go ahead, T. As a sort of negative space, so you, you have optimization problem where you know definitely what is not good. Like you don't want to be killed during the sex, or most of us don't want to be killed. And then uh, if that's our parameters, then the other, the other, like there is maxima and minima, and the maxima would be like minima would be killed, maxima would be some whatever, well, state of, state of well-being that we look in, in the sex, whatever, whatever for each of us it is, that well-being. And everything in between is the, this, like the phase space of opportunities. And what we have as preconceived notion, as we say, like, we don't want to be killed, and maybe we don't want to be like somehow mutilated, but then everything else is fine. And then we're delusional about that because there is always some parameter that we didn't account for. So then the next stage of testing will be this closing on on the window and we will find our own Overton window, whatever it is. So we have this all like illusions of what is fine for us. And that I think extends to all other life. Like this iterative thing is not just sex, it's life broadly that like we imagine that we are fine with everything if, if we are open and mindful and whatnot. And then something comes and we feel like, mm, rejection, the closeness, the state of contraction, like I don't like that sensation about life or about sex or about anything. And then that is update of the system. So you 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 narrowing down your window and saying like, this is already lower, lower, lower. And then in this process of iteration, you'll come probably to some shape of this, whatever is fine for you, which would be only possible with like imagining that you are more wide, but then finding out that you are more narrow and at some point you'll come to this shape of yours. Uh, so, so I think that's a really useful lens on things and, and it's a really uh, important space for people to explore. But I think what Danica might be getting onto is sort of the openness and connectedness between people and, and the conflict between what if someone likes a sex act and their partner does not um and how do you explore that closeness versus while trying to create that connection between two people is that you will weigh that as like it's it's already embedded in the function of utility for you like if i want to satisfy my partner and i also okay with suffering there is always intersect there is like at some point my suffering is too much to satisfy my partner until I die. Mm -hmm. And then like this, 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 like the slope is somewhere there. So like, unless I'm ready to kill myself for my partner, like we're always finding this, this part of a, uh, of a function that doesn't not satisfy the, me, but satisfy partner. Like they, the will supply and demand curve. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel uh, like and, though, the being transparent about where that line is for you is open and closed would be, you feel like you don't want to do a certain thing, but you pretend like you do, as an example. Wouldn't mm -hmm. that be an example of being simultaneously open and closed in the same time because you're open uh, enough to do something in line with it, but there is still something closed at the same time? I'm also thinking about um, how in sex there are things that simultaneously arouse and disgust people. Mm -hmm. And that seems common and also like a place where we might find out more about how people would be open and closed at the same time. It's a good idea. I guess, would that situation be being open to the closeness? 
So say if I'm having sex with someone mm -hmm. and I'm disgusted by the fact that they have covered their hair in yogurt, but that simultaneously turns me on as I lick the yogurt, is that me being open to the closeness? Uh, if if you transcend it in real time and include it as the like desirable transgression of of your own uh, boundaries, I think like there is no need to put closeness there. Like mm -hmm. the moment where you completely halt when when you, when you stop all all the activities, that's that's the closeness. But if you embed this explorativeness, I think it's it's openness. Like you uh, you're ready to go until like your your body tells you like I'm I'm completely stopping. Whatever you you halt in, in in paralysis. I'm thinking that whatever exercise we make here would probably benefit from including a dance or a painting or a sound uh, component. Component. I imagine that uh, drawing, the one that Colton sent, the collaborative uh, drawing space, where each person like has particular, you know, the line or or putting all cover over the whole canvas or whatever, and then the next person reacts to it. It could e either be rejection of that, so cancellation in some way, or playing of that, so it's some sort of acceptance, and it could be a gradient between that. So you can like if one person draws a line, other person cut part of that line or extend that line or change the color. So it will be already in between you accept whatever other person is doing or uh, put in your own uh, artistic vision, which could be translated in your you know, physical comfort or whatever, whatever it represents. Do you wanna uh, put the link to that in the chat, Colton? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, I texted everybody, it was, what was that called? Mm -mm -mm. It was I imagined Aggie like .io. Yes, Aggie.io. If like one person is drawing a circle or a square and I have like strong repulsion to square, if I do, I'm just like cutting half of the square and just put in some red color over it or something like that. And then the next person goes in and like we see this acceptance versus openness versus closeness to uh, the present aesthetic. Is there a difference between being simultaneously open and closed and being only partially open? Like, is that the same thing? Because I think I'm coming up against that as a conceptual block. I like I feel you and I'm struggling also with sort of semantic of that because I imagine that if you catch the moment of like presence and full attention what you are you sort of open to all experience until the moment where it just becomes unbearable whatever it is so like physical pain or whatever so then or like some unsatisfaction and then everything that that you experience until the point it's sort of absolute openness so there is no point of closeness but you know that closeness will happen because change is constant so like if i would sit and tell i'm open to all experiences and someone will you know start hitting me in the head, I will pretty fast say like, I'm closed now. But right before that, there will be complete openness and there will be truly like internalized complete openness, whatever it is. And then the only point of us, or maybe I will sit for an hour and become hungry. So then the closeness will happen. I'm not open to sitting in like experiencing whatever it is until this next uh, stimulus is, is happening. Uh, so like I, I'm not sure how we're defining this because I think from this perspective we always sort of open until the fact of closeness happening and it always happens because there is no other way. Mm. Like we, we sort of fall asleep every night and I think that's ultimate like closeness. Like, mm, <laughs> that's uh... because you don't remember your dreams. I know I was gonna say I am very open when I sleep. <laughs> but no, I, you, you sorry? 
No, no, go ahead. Were you about to say something or? I mean, it's she definitely important. has conversations when she's asleep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have full conversations and uh, like remember my dreams and have them like, I'll, I'll, or if I forget them in the morning, I'll be doing something during the day and it'll spark that dream, which reminds me of another dream, which reminds me of another dream anyway. So I would say. I like you your parents through your dreams. Yeah. Even we're... seeing you sleep. It's through like stories about your dreams. <laughs> um uh, yeah you'll have to I mean I go to bed at nine o'clock every night Danica so you'll just have to like come and take a peek um <laughs> really hard. A recorder right there yeah um but I don't know I'm I'm also feeling like if there's any sense of resistance or tension even if you're pushing yourself to be open to an experience there is some some part of you w wants to be close to it so I think you could say that that's a that sort of paradoxical duality is existing there but I think the way that T is framing it um, for them is that if you're making the decision to be to move in that direction any way that you are in fact open whereas for me it feels like if there is a part of me that doesn't want to do it that part is still close like it's closed with fuzzy borders or like a weak gate or whatever so I don't know but Danica you had something to say that was better than me dreaming about my parents and yelling no at you like what you said goes perfectly into what I or like it it inspired it I had an unformed thought and then you made it a form thought by what you just said so and now where'd it go um oh yeah <laughs> so yeah like what you said about um how it's like there's a part of you that's resisting even if you're going forward with the thing is it kind of like you are a wheel and there's this tension that's kind of like blocking you from going forward or like what it made me think of is like in improv how people say you have to say like yes and yeah. like hear fully what the other person says and then add to it and then if there's like for me like the way that I think about anxiety is like voices that are blocking me from hearing what the other person is saying. So like um, something getting in the way of the wheels. So that part is closed because I'm like, those parts are like static. They're just like noise when I am trying to fully focus on the person in front of me. So like you're open and closed. Like I agree with T too, that like if you're ultimately going forward with the thing, then like you are, in act being open, but you might have parts of you that are getting in the way, that are closed. I included as always, a part, like this closeness, it's predicted. Like I know that fact of closeness will happen. There is no other way around. There is openness and then like closeness will happen because that's inevitable nature of final you know, experience of consciousness. You always hit particular change and that change is more closed state. And whatever it is, sleep or pain or you know the, the dissatisfaction with experience. Uh, maybe we just like frame it differently. That Alicia mentioned that like it's always the part of experience, and I agree. I, I could relate to that. Like you, you hesitate about something. Your weight about doing something versus not doing is a little higher on the doing, and you still contain in yourself some like doubt. I agree with that. And maybe there's just two ways of uh, verbalizing it that like you open and jump and you, you jump off the cliff and realize like I might be in pain, but that's okay. I accept like some, some possibility of that pain and, and then it happens and you don't go and don't jump second time until you, you know, recover. I mean, it sounds like we're identifying that there are, there are at least two classes of openness and closeness where there's the openness and closeness to doing and the openness and closing closeness to enjoying um and so like how much does the openness of doing counteract the clo closeness of enjoying or how much does the openness of enjoying counteract the closeness of doing um and like is there a trade-off matrix sort of like the one elliot uh made for us last week along those two axes Do you think we can collapse, like enjoying and doing? Because if we make a choice, we sort of enjoy this choice. 
maybe that's just like verbalization of this sort, but if you make a choice, you sort of enjoy this choice as versus opposite of not doing a choice. So like you're constantly presented with choice of doing something and not. And if you, whatever, whatever your, like, whatever motivation we can, we can somehow define it as more enjoyable or more utilitarian uh, word here doesn't matter. It's like uh, zero versus one. Right. So, but that's, that's, I think what everyone's sort of getting to is it, it may be a zero versus one decision to do it or not. And so overall you as a, as a homo economicus are making some choice that uh, says, all of the factors involved choose me, make me choose to do the thing versus not. But mm -hmm. there, there are all of these elements inside of you that are screaming at you not to do it. And so uh, uh, okay. how, how does that affect the quality of doing? Um, and, and so... I agree. It, it could be this threshold between how much is the weight of not doing versus doing and there could be just one like one point of of, of tipping point like 49 <laughs> versus 51 of doing not doing and if you have this tipping point it's uh like uh like the most the most paradoxical you're almost not doing it and then enjoyment mm -hmm. is uh, defined by that like just one percent of sort of gamble on um, joy and so I think maybe that that is the crux of the game is to find this thing that that you are only 51% sure you want to do and to try it. Uh -huh. um, or, or, or is it to try and take that thing that you don't want to that you 51% want to do and make it so that you 100% want to do it. Because um, those are two very different games. Mm -hmm. But if you find the 51% thing, and then once you fully commit to doing it, then yeah, like, the latter, then you figure out how to get 100% of the way. Oh, bam. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, I guess we need to connect to this canvas. You need to send us a link. I, I did. Chat. It's it's in the chat. Oh, okay. So we're starting off with hi over here. I don't even get to the bed. Boy, there is a hi over here. I I drew that. I. I just did it to test the tools. There's a little paintbrush on the left and the color picker. Oh my right. god! <laughs> <laughs> Look at your room. I hear some rejection. Uh huh. <laughs> so right, cool. uh, let's actually zoom on, in on this. What was the uh, objection <laughs> there? Was it the contrast? It was not objection. It was just ah! It's just. <laughs> <really> <laughs> like... I love this so game already. <laughs> I want to move the. Ooh. Why is this fucking working? Give it to me. <laughs> oh, because I made it the wrong color. Hold on, everyone. Uh, I think that this is going on. Okay, here we go. Anyway. No, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Just so you know, I'm the one who's doing all of the undos and redos. <laughs> Great. Chaos monster. Oh, God. Oh, God. I hate what I'm doing. How do I? How do I undo it? Ooh, I like that though. You you can do Control Z to undo. There's an eraser tool as well, everyone. In case you need it to know. Well, it's gonna click the game. Or you can click the left and right arrows on the top, and that's undo and redo. Undo is the ultimate closed. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Alright, so where are you? Aha! 
decrease. Do this for mm -hmm. two minutes, and then we're going to stop and see how everyone reacts to what's on the canvas and kind of be like, I like this, I don't like this for each other. Oh! Yucky! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with their... <laughs> I just can only react by how much I hate it and hope somebody who's better at this than me will fix it. <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! Oh, I hate it. I think that oh, was somebody's exactly. playing. Somebody's got the layers going on. I love it. Is it not you, Colton? <laughs> it's not me. I want to get this little. Thingy smaller. I'm I'm drawing this crab, <laughs> crab hippie. <laughs> and that crab hippie. Oh yeah, with their long hair and crabby claws. I need a paintbrush. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm drawing something or it's somebody else. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. There. No. There. No. Oh, God. Ooh, baby. <laughs> that was my mistake. I don't know how to get rid of it. There we go. No. Yeah, thank I'm you. I'm curious about what's going on with all these layers. Layers are getting all messed up. Ooh, no. Ooh, nice, nice cut. Cut and paste. <laughs> I am a fan. Do you guys ever play with Kid Picks in school? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kid Picks was the shit. Hypercard was even better though. I miss Hypercard. Hypercard? Hypercard? It, it was like a mix between a programming language and a PowerPoint. So you could like draw a bear and then you could make it move across the screen by like programming a speed to it and like they had all of these sounds that you could give to things so you could make little mini cartoon movies uh the entire game of mist was made in hypercard wow it was, it was like yeah know it was a it was a really bitchin program don't <sighs> Let's add another layer to this game where whatever we come up with, Alicia has to have a huge print in her room. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a fatty decal. <laughs> Can I erase other people's shit? I hate this. No, I can't. <gasps> you dicks. Uh, I, I think you can. You just have to find what layer it's on. Oh, you're uh -huh. right. Let me in. Ooh. Ooh. I wow. It. I hate it. Oop, that's I wonder if you oh yeah, you can change blending modes. Heck yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I like that actually. I love this. Wow. This is wow. only appropriate. I I, I love that, it, that, that we went so deep that eventually it turned into something you loved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh. Yo. I do not think this would be a great illustration of open clothes, but I've totally changed my mind. <laughs> it's just beautiful. <laughs> How do I make it smaller? I see the little magnifying thing in the corner, but... Hell. Sometimes you don't know what you could be open to until you've gone all the way into something you would normally be close to.
for uh, animating so this mofo. <laughs> under size, I think. No. You can drag the pixels. There, there's a little hand in the corner that allows you to move the screen. A little hand in your corner. Oh, I see. Yeah. Your crab is flipping everyone off. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? The, that crab's an anarchist. He can stay like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I don't hate it. Yay. It's a good start. Oh, there you go. Ah. I don't think you can actually toggle how viewable the layers are. Oh, there they are. Oh I my god, out. I'm just trying to get it to the side of my screen. It's terrible. Okay, here we go. Can I fuck with your layers? I think you might have to like be in like the only one in the layer to toggle the viewability of it. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, like if the pencil symbol is in the layer, then you can't. I see. Uh, yeah, I love how I'm learning to use this with everyone else, except for layer two. Layer two j the, appears to be locked somehow. Is layer two in the layer with with the most shit in it? Yeah. Whoever's drawing, I'm just being a dick and drawing over your thing. Yeah, I noticed <laughs> Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take it away. <laughs> okay. You like yours better? I didn't. I just, right. I just thought it was fun. <laughs> we're at we're at four twenty. Do we want to uh, put a time limit on this? Yeah, let's uh, yeah. go through these and see what everyone appreciated and what they didn't appreciate. Well, I don't appreciate not being as tech savvy as y'all and not understanding how to work this program. Yeah. How do you know that we know how to work this program? <laughs> because you're doing it. Some of I, you are doing it. I mean, I have a general idea, but I actually didn't use any feature. I didn't change anything besides the size of my brush. I'll take it away. Don't worry. Um, T, was there yeah. some... Did you notice when you were closed off to things that happened on the screen? <laughs> uh, truly, I got submerged into creative process and what was what was pleasant about all of this. I knew that I'm not controlling anything full mm -hmm. and it was like being a, a tiny little system that can change something in completely unpredictable environment. So none of the changes like were perceived as closeness, I perceived them as necessary perturbation of environment. <laughs> it's like you do your own thing, you, you learn the tools, and then some shit happens, and it's like, okay, I'll, I'll keep learning tools. Okay. Um, uh, and I like how it turned out. It looks uh, dope. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we will probably have to hang this somewhere. Alicia, what are there changes that you did not that you were close to, or, or what on, did you find I'm yourself being over how to, to? How to work this thing? How do you work it? What are you trying to work? Oh my oh, god! Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that'd be funny if you just Wait. hung. Okay, hung hold, up on, the hold, red, on, hold on, hold on. I want to do that. Oh Jesus! Oh. Okay. Oh. Well, I mean, damn. Hey. No. Let's see. 
It looks like a friend of mine's art. His name is Greg Uzalek. Well, tell Greg we're coming for his game. Yeah. <laughs> you can sell these as tokens, right? <laughs> coming for his gig, Greg. Watch out. Yeah. He, he does it all in uh, physical media, though, so. Oh, well. But does he do it with four other people? No. No. I don't no. think so. Not yet. I, I did invite him to join this group, but we we, we shall see where he's at. We try again, Greg. Sorry, mm -hmm. Greg. I don't know you. I'm sure you're great. Um, <laughs> what did I, I dislike some of the color choices, but then if I just stopped paying attention for like 30 seconds, they were immediately replaced with color choices I liked better, so it didn't matter. I don't like that flower that I'm revealing currently, but I can't uh -huh. figure out how to get rid of it, so yeah. whatever. Well, I drew it. It was the first thing I drew. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was in a very open mode for most of this. Uh, and then uh, Alicia said that uh, the crab was flipping everybody off. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll change that. But then I was like, no, I don't want to change that. No, so it doesn't. Was, because he's flipping, that doesn't mean anything. It was just an observation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my initial reaction was to be like, oh, okay, I guess I'll change that. But then I was like, internally, I realized that I didn't want to change that. And so I switched back to a closed mode. Mm -hmm. And that turned out to be what you wanted, so. Because <laughs> we all know the whole purpose of the exercise is to give me what I want. No, not that. Yeah. You know, isn't that what being a generous lover is? Right. <laughs> no. I have no idea, actually. <laughs> no. I like what? that. I like I like the flipping back and forth between it. Uh huh. I hate it that I, I all of your all layers are locked to me, and I don't know what to do. Do you do this? Huh. Yeah, I guess. I have no idea how to manipulate the layers. So. Or uh, you can layer. only create a layer; it appears. Ah. So you cannot you cannot manipulate someone's layer, but you can create new one. So this program, at least by default, seems to have some sort of default yes and feature. <laughs> <laughs> yes and feature, right? No, I preferred it before. This is terrible. I wonder if it has like a time. Well, I should have screenshotted it when it was still something that I loved. And now it's uh -huh. this. Now it's all yaki. No, it's just something else. There was a middle point, which would probably have been, uh, there are two points to me that were like most aesthetically pleasing. And it was like when it was like green and semi-translucent and, and turquoise. And then when it was all orange and stuff was being revealed. You're welcome for that. That was me. But ah! I'm also happy to see all this that, again, I would have never predicted. Like, there's no way I would have predicted this from the start or even from the middle that this is where we would end up right here. Danica, how was your journey? Ooh, nice. Oh, Ooh. I like. I like that. I think aesthetically, yeah. when you first blotted out everything in red and then just revealed a tiny bit, that was the nicest. That's the one that I would hang on my wall. <laughs> and then any time I was annoyed at a sudden color change, I was not, I was like annoyed for one second and then I was like amused at other people's annoyances. So if I got annoyed, I was like, oh, this is really going to annoy certain people. <laughs> <laughs> But who might those people be? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> All right, well. Oh, well, I guess this is good enough for a fridge. Very cute. 
We gotta put our names in age. Okay. Let's... Oh man. I, everyone, everyone, come to layer number seven at the top. Okay. How do we go to layer number seven at the top? So in the in the bottom right, uh, uh -huh. like scroll the bar all the way to the top. Right. Uh, but how do I know and, that I've? And then I think you layer? you you double click it. No. Okay. I'm at layer seven and. Oh, weird. Uh, whoever owns Layer 7, right-click it and see if you can, like, make it editable to anyone. No, I'm telling you, Colton, you cannot. You cannot get into some... I own it. Nobody... Oh, here we go. Just kidding. Ha. Ah. Yeah, you, you can lock and unlock the layer. <laughs> well, I think I've locked it. What the ball? Oh, hey. Can you all get in there? Uh, oh, no, like now, it's, now it's for sure locked. Okay, well, now it should be unlocked, I think. Okay. Uh, I don't nope. know. I, I can't enter it. All right. Well, you're all SOL. It's my layer. Yeah. Hey, do you want to be the signer for everyone? <laughs> no. No. I think we can just find a corner or something. Okay. That or works. We can actually go with the spirit of the rest of this and simply sign wherever. Wherever. I'll sign right on the crab. It's going to be great. Huh? Crab cakes. I guess I'll sign by the flower. The first flower. My fancy flower is now gone. <laughs> um, but not forgotten. I'm going to sign it in my favorite color. I can't Parents see what you think you're so... Oh, is it poop brown? No, it's it's gray. Well, that's not a color, Colton. <laughs> Isn't it, though? No. <laughs> it's a shade. It is according oh. to hex codes. According to what? I mean, does... Uh, hex codes, which are used to delineate colors in websites and things. Doesn't gray mean that it's reflecting just a little bit of all kinds of light? Mm -hmm. But but not not all of it. You know, it keeps a little bit of it to itself. Selfish <laughs> like that. Selective bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to put our age. Yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you were People close like, to sharing happening? your age with the world. Um, hold on. That's not a number. So old. Oh, oh, oh. Fuck. Yeah. Mission complete. Damn it. With confidence now. Ah! It looks like the ohm symbol. If you don't mm -hmm. know anything oh. about anything. It does. Oh. Oh, no, no, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, almost an ongoing <laughs> joke. I would call it a joke about throat so singing hard. in our household when I know for a fact that that is not throat singing. Our next I mean, I, we, we can do throat singing if we want to. Absolutely yeah. not. Please do not. You know, I, I can get some overtones going. Nope. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoever's doing that is much closer to actual throat singing. Yeah, that was me. Good job. See, the problem is it's not throat singing when Ray does it. It's just him making a cow noise. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I, I don't quite have like the third overtone ability yet, but I'm working on it. All right, so this is a psychedelic nightmare, but we made it together, so well done, everyone. Yeah, it's a good yeah. nightmare. I can't even tell. Oh, okay. There's T's. There's Danica's. There's Colton's. Delicious. I see your number. My number, and then immediately to its to its four o'clock is my name signed in my circle. I see. Uh -huh. Well, this was our creation. It's called <laughs> Iterated Sex. Here we are. <laughs> this is what Iterated Sex looks like. All right. I hate so what it. did we learn? <laughs> <laughs> You can never as, predict as, where it's going to go. Yeah, as usually <laughs> with life, nothing. And be ready for everything, learn nothing. <laughs> and when you hold on to things, when you're attached to like certain um, moments of life, I think it, it disappears. Mm -hmm. Well, we knew so that. What, what did we learn about openness and closeness? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sometimes you have to go deep into the closeness and, and you might find openness on the other side. Uh, as, as my friend Ray says, everything is true. <laughs> <laughs> everything is true. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, everything changes and your closeness and openness will vacillate. And I think, I don't know, I was, I'm still grumpy that we lost that middle thing without my taking a picture of it. You can probably hit the undo button 200 I, times. So can I would like to try this exercise some like at least one time more and maybe learn in like some we can we can try more structure or even less structure and just like working longer because I think we didn't learn the tools enough but when you learn tools more we can create something more uh, like live. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, if you come up with any structures, share it with us and uh, we will probably come back to this one day. It seems like a good activity. Maybe add in some 3D objects, like if you can like add mm -hmm. capacity to, you know, draw right away the projections. Yeah. Uh, also, this was, I think, recorded. So you should be able to look in the final video for the moment for where yeah print print, print, sc print screen it with like all the faces yeah <laughs> <laughs> that does seem like an appropriate t-shirt oh save share as png <laughs> can you guys save it oh i can move this around Okay. Oh, and you can export it to Photoshop? Heck nice. yeah. These should be our business cards. <laughs> All of our names are on them. Hippies. Hippies. <laughs> 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 uh.